Welcome to A Brief Pause, a pet podcast. We talk about all things pet related, but this season, mostly dog related. We're continuing a conversation with the famous Dr. Cliff Faber, a top dermatologist and international speaker on a multitude of topics. So check out the other episodes. We're jumping right into a conversation. We've split into multiple episodes, but his full bio is in the first episode. So I suggest starting from one through the rest of the season. This episode is called, What is Degreasing? Degreasing, obviously, if you have a greasy skin, greasy dog, and you have your groomer or yourself, try to degrease. What does that mean? What does it do? How to do it? Let's get into it. I did want to mention before, when we were talking about degreasing, in my head, I was thinking of one thing. I think it comes out, uh, as you uh, mentioned and took it. When I was saying degreasing, I was specifically thinking of... um, Cause I don't, I think I only use that term really when I'm doing this. Cause I know what you're talking about degreasing. Uh, I use when I'm talking about people that have been using medicine, ear medicine, or the dogs run under the car and gotten, like that. and, uh, like New York city has a special kind of funk that's greasy that gets on animals. Yes. But, but removing their own grease, um, or sebum but is this- really not the goal. The same thing applies. Um, if you use a degreaser to take that out, you're going to have a problem. Um, I mean, we, we see that great photo op with the ducks and geese and, the, and, and that. Uh, reality is, think about it from this perspective. If I take a duck or a goose that got into motor oil and I strip all the oils off that, those feathers, how well do you think they can fly? How well do you think they can float? How well do you think they can control their temperature? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the side that we don't see about that is a lot of times a good percentage of them die anyways. Now, the question is, did they die from the motor oil or did they die from the treatment? And of course, we're going to blame it on the motor oil. But the reality is, is we've compromised their ability to survive when we take off all those natural oils and greases. That's our protection layer. You know, you think about even on our skin, if we have no sebum, uh, like if I just scratched you and, and I scratched all the sebum, those oils, you're going to have an infection in the next couple of days um, because that's our barrier against toxins. That's our barrier against dehydration, you know, all those things. And when we lose that, then we're very, very vulnerable on, on that because uh, the sebum, if you really look at it on a, a small term, has the food, has the water and is a protection of the skin. When you take away all that, then it's hard for the skin to survive. Uh, so that'd be like me stripping you naked, putting you outside and giving you no food and water. And I don't care what the, the weather condition is. You're not going to survive long term uh, on that. So a lot of times we set ourselves up with some of the things that we do. Yeah, well, I was referencing more of, of the surprise that people see when I do the close open close when I'm able to, to break up uh, some of that greasy ear medicine or something like that with a conditioner oh, and yeah. then do it. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. But even this brush. Uh, my brush for sale on Amazon is, uh, is, uh, one of the things I mentioned is one of the benefits is sebum production because it's a gentle, you know, you're, you're encouraging a little, uh, you know, sebum production and blood flow because it's this gentle, but you get it. Yeah. The brush stimulates the, and and we recommend, you know, I, I have, that's the first I've seen in your brush, but I like your design just from what I'm seeing. I think it would be very efficient. It's, it's a lot of what we recommend because it will pull that dead coat. It'll also stimulate, stimulate the movement of that sebum on on that, which is important on that. You you don't want something that's rough and you don't want to abrase. So I assume those are like uh, rubbery tips to them. Yeah. That. And it's got the level of, uh, it's got the, the grade of silicone that does grip the hair out. Cause you know, some of them tend to be a little plasticky and sort of they'll go through the coat, but they're not pulling anything out. Yeah. So this is a, it's a good one. It looks very similar to everything on the market, but as a groomer, it's just one of those that like this one works well, <laughs> you know? No, I, I like what I see there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So that's one of the things, what was else I was talking about? Oh, so earlier you talked about the competition between yeast and bacteria. And I wanted to mention this because I, this product is still out there and it's driving me crazy. Um, but that product don't come for me, but that product, uh, angel eyes and other ones like that, that are, uh, the ones that help tear stains, but they're, they have a low grade antibiotic in them and they put them on the food and it magically gets rid of the tear stains because it's kill because it's an antibiotic. I, that's what I try to explain to people why that's maybe not the best thing to use. Um, 
it is that's why is because you're sitting there and the next thing you know they end up with a yeast infection either in the ears or on the skin around the eyes uh or wherever on it generally on the skin and they're confused as to why and it's because they've been using this internal antibiotic for months on end like yeah it works the the the, the uh that natural bacteria is what's causing that rust stain so of course that works but obviously you don't want that as a long-term um solution yeah, anytime you use long-term antibiotics, and especially in low levels, you set yourself up for a much bigger problem than eye state. Um, because if you start changing the, the gut flora and you start getting resistant bacteria, like I said, you've got a much bigger problem on the overall. You know, eye staining as a whole, there, there's kind of two schools of thought to that. Uh, one is it's uh, basically porphyrins that are basically breakdown products of red blood cells. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking kind of the iron and stuff in there. Uh, the other school of thought is they are yeast infections. Uh, so if you use long-term antibiotics, and a lot of times you're gonna get yeast infections on that. Now I'm kind of the school of thought, it's probably from the breakdown of red blood cells for the simple reason. It's hard for me to understand where both eyes, the mouth, the feet, the anal region, the prepuce all got a, a fungal infection. And that's the only place in the body that has a fungal infection. Um, so that makes less sense to me. But I think the reality is it's, it's probably a little of both on, on the overall. But, you know, if you understand how it occurs, then a lot of times one of the things that we can do in there is look at a solution. And the solution is you clean that and we use something that, that's penetrating to clean that debris out. And, and I always say, tell people that the ones that have the most stain there are usually your light colored dogs that have very porous coats. And so they tend to suck it in. And it's kind of, I, I call it the blue haired lady syndrome. Um, we grab the wrong thing, uh, you, you know, so we've got that color in there. So if, if we can, can take away the ability to suck that in, we do better. So if we shampoo and then condition well, we fill the sponge up with water, then there's less area to suck stuff in. But if that sponge is dry, it's gonna suck it right in. And then a lot of times what we'll do is we will, and a lot of times we'll use whitening products and things like that to, to help that. But then we also have a natural silicone called Sil uh, Plus that we will put on there, which creates a barrier that will go ahead and create kind of a drain track there. It's something that literally one drop once a day and, and you can pretty much prevent that from sticking. It, it also works well in urine stains and things like that. Unlike a normal silicone that leaves a residue, this works more like a humectant, which it's absorbed in. It provides a nice barrier, but doesn't leave the residue because I wouldn't want to put regular silicone up next to the eye, number one, but then you'd start getting residue and then you'd have a whole other problem uh, if you're using the, the regular silicone on that. Yeah, I think silicones alone are a topic that's hard for people to differentiate what you're reading on a bottle or in a description and that's why you're right. It wouldn't be a bad idea, especially if someone is really suffering um, with their animal with skin issues to just take your course and see if they can arm themselves. Because a lot of people are struggling with the recommendations of their veterinarian. Um, you know, some, maybe some of the things aren't quite working, but then on top of it, um, they're reading blogs and they're on the internet and they're taking advice from whoever either groomer or anyone who can, you know, and they're trying to weed through what may work and what may not work in their own education. Um, I think that your courses are a little bit of like, here's, here's the actual information, at least from what I've seen, that's, that's, you can actually listen to that. You can trust that these are the answers. And then you can decide how that applies to your animal and have a little bit more arsenal to work with trying to figure out how to fix the problems that you may have going on that as much money as people spend trying to figure these things out, even, even just on something as simple as changing food <laughs> a bunch of times thinking that it may be the chicken or the duck or the potato or something that they're, you know, just those bags of food alone can be quite expensive. Absolutely. If you try it for a while and it doesn't work. And um, I used to tell people back in the day, like, just go ahead and get the allergy test because back then it was like, oh, it's $300. But I was like, well, how much of the four visits, you know, vet visits and the different 14 different bags of food that you tried cost, right? Like you might get down to it a little faster, just do the test. Um, but yeah, I think this is in that same category of, of being, uh, probably quite helpful. Well, and, and even that, you know, we're only as good as the source of our information, uh, you know, and, and 
Facebook is not a good source. I, I mean, everybody's got an opinion, but very little of it's based on science. And, you know, when you start dealing with allergies and things like that, you know, there, there's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of times we're chasing rabbit holes. I mean, I mean, number one, you cannot change from a commercial diet to another commercial diet and expect to get results because of the simple reason they're not fixed formula. They're not using the same thing. So this bag, we might have done great. And the next bag, we don't do great on, on that. Um, so we start getting into that. Uh, when you do the, the blood test for food allergies, pretty much worthless. Every dermatologist out there would say it's not consistent. It doesn't give you good results. There's a hair test. And I, I heard learned one the other day talking to some dermatologists is if you want to see what your, your teddy bear is allergic to, send in some of that hair and it'll come up positive for some of the food tests on some of the ones that are on the internet right now. Ah. Uh, it tells you how good those tests are. Um, Interesting. So, you know, there again, a lot of people jump in there. It sounds like a quick fix, but the reality is it's not. Um, you know, it, it, everybody's out to get a dollar, you know, and the question is, is it a, 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 a good source or is it just a source on, on that? Um, um, you know, at the end of the day, I always say proofs in the pudding, um, you know, and if you guys want to see before and afters, get on our website, um, isbusa.com. We've got a whole list of, of before and afters. And, and if you want to talk further, we can do that. I was also going to tell you that we do consulting, um, you know, and we don't charge for that. We're, we're here to help, you know, at the end of the day, it's about fixing the pet. Um, that's that Suzanne, my, my wife and, and a groomer of 35 years, our goal is to help the pets. Uh, that, that's our ultimate goal. So if we can teach you a little bit to help you solve some of these problems, that's that's what we're here for. Uh, um, so we well, also- that must be the Suzanne that I've talked to because I've called that number many times. Uh, and I've also given that number to um, a few of my clients uh, when they're also stuck in that situation. And, and I'm saying, you know, just call and ask them exactly what you buy, should buy for home, because right. I'll forget every single product and, and every single case use uh, or use case and, and say, well, let me just ask them as a refresher, because it's the same reason that probably veterinarians can't hold all this information in at once. And during uh, multiple different types of things, you defer to another professional, even like we did one, um, about poison control and the fact there's a poison control line because how on earth could every veterinarian remember every single man-made chemical that's out there and what to do to treat it. Right. You've got a, a, a number for that. And I feel like you guys have been that number uh, for me and my clients when I like forget, well, which product do they have that helps with this? And wait, which one should we use for this? Because it's just a ton of information. And luckily where I am now, uh, I have very few dogs with any kind of skin issues. So I just forget all the time. And so I'll say, well, you know what, call, call them and they'll tell you what to buy that you should use at home. And I know what to use, you know, when I see you once a month. Thanks for listening to this four part series with Dr. Cliff favor of a brief pause. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok if you're not already and join the community. Let us know what you think. And we'd love your feedback and your likes and your subscriptions, but most of all your ideas, what else do you want to hear uh, and see and learn about pets till next time.